My guys, Cole here. It's been six grueling months since our last Rocket League tutorial video. In that time, Britain and the US have jumped the shark. Everyone on YouTube's overtaken our sub count, and Doomsie's featured in precisely zero official RLCS player spotlight videos. Among all that chaos, Rocket League has steadily continued to evolve. Last year's one in a million wonder goal has become the insta-skipped replay of the Prospect Division 3er. The Elite, meanwhile, could consistently conjure up mechanics we considered inconceivable when the game first came out. If you feel like you've been left behind, fear not. This is our guide to 10 Rocket League skills you'll need to master before going pro. Once you've watched, you can download O'Neill Clan's Training Mod Pack, which automatically sets the ball up so you can practice these moves in your own time. His walkthrough of this is at the top of the description. For now though, screw that guy. Let's get on with the tutorial. Despite the name, the double jump aerial is so much more than just pressing X twice before boosting. It is in fact a fundamental mechanic if you want to play Rocket League to any sort of untrocious standard. If you're the only player in a match who can't double jump aerial, you'll be slowest to every ball. You'll also use the most boost, and statistically have the least impressive genitalia out of anyone on the pitch. So how's the move done? All you've got to do is jump, then hold boost during your second jump. This means that you never stop boosting as your car ascends. You'll launch into the air at great speed, using only a fraction of the boost it would otherwise take to reach such a majestic height. Amazingly, this even makes reverse aerials slightly less redundant. Someone give me credit. At lower levels, this will have you beating your opponents to almost every ball, even if they jump first. Enjoy feeling like Michael Jordan while it lasts though, because you'll soon rank up into lobbies where everyone's doing it. Quick warning. You may initially find yourself backflipping like a gnarly snowboarder, dude. To fix this, take extra care to completely let go of the analog stick before jumping the second time. Knowing how and when to take a first touch can swing a game's momentum in your favour. If your defence is being peppered and the ball drops your way, you must sometimes resist that temptation to just thwack it back in the opposition's general direction. In 1s and 2s, you'll notice this happening all the time. That's because each car is blessed with an entire nebula of personal space around the pitch. It happens much more rarely in 3s though, because it's so much more rushed. Saying that, it does happen. Mostly when your opponents are awaiting your next hit like they're a bunch of desperate junkies on a porch. A first touch also prevents those moments where the ball will bounce off the wall and straight back into your danger zone. Just taking a touch here and dribbling into the corner can give your teammates the time they need to rotate back to the fence grab themselves some boost, watch the extended Lord of the Rings strategy, and reset their positioning. Even if you do end up just getting tackled when you're on the wall. If, on the other hand, you are one of the offensive pepperers, a controlled first touch can give you an angle to shoot that wouldn't have otherwise existed. I like to take a first touch that sticks the ball to the side of my car, turn towards the ball so it rolls slightly up my car, then quickly dodge towards it and do a delayed flip. This catches the ball and flicks it over the onrushing defense in one fell swoop. To risk a first touch, you need to have situational awareness. Choosing the wrong moment can lead to your opponents swarming you like attractive girls swarm me in a nightclub. So just clear those lines if there's any uncertainty. This one is self-explanatory. Actually, just in case you don't speak fluent half flippies, I'll explain it too. The half flip's great for defending counterattacks, e.g. when you're the third man and you've overcommitted. With the half flip, you can dodge back to your own goal, gain speed as usual, and simultaneously rotate your car 180 degrees. If the ball's directly behind you, half flipping lets you hit it with power as you turn your car. The mechanics are simple ish. When reversing, dodge of your analog stick held about 1 or 2 degrees left or right of directly downwards. You need your stick to be fractionally left or right of 180 degrees. If you're dead central, this move will not work. When your car's upside down, quickly flick your analog stick directly upwards. As soon as you land, dodge forwards to keep momentum. We recommend taking to free play to experiment with your timing. Pinching is great if you're in a defensive pinch. But how do you replicate this when you're away from the wall? 
defensive pinch. I get it. When two teammates are surfing the same wavelength, they can force a pinch by driving into the ball at the same time. This is more opportunist than pre-planned, but a high-level defense is always ready for the fullback. When you're in that nasty situation where any aerial will rebound the ball into your own danger zone, you can force a wall pinch. Just follow the ball after making contact and smush it against the wall in mid-air. Even if you can't get a proper pinch, you can still block the ball as it rebounds. At the very least, this slows the game down enough that your teammates have more chance to recover. This also works in attack, and according to top mathematicians, makes the ball 111.3% more difficult to read for the poor goalkeeper. Now, all you have to do is spam great pass until you get timed up from chat and slash or abused over Steam messaging. If you ask me, which, by watching this video, you indirectly are, the doink is the single most glorious Rocket League move in existence. Its beauty keeps me up at night. Its purity makes me weep. I sexually identify as a doink is what I'm trying to say, and this is how you can do the mating dance of my people. The doink, in its infinite glorious wisdom, massages away the uncertainty of whether to redirect a goalbound ball or let it run. It's a move so satisfying that even relatively tame ones lead to reactions as unashamedly lame as this. You have a pizza, Matt. A pizza. Oh, doink! Yes! He's done it! He's doinked! <laughs> I've got to save that replay. Mate, everyone loves doinks. Doinks are going in this tutorial. Fuck it, I might just grab this bit and put I'm it in the tutorial. Doinks. To replicate this masterpiece, drive to where the ball's gonna land and position yourself so it'll hit the far edge of your car. As soon as ball and car connect, the split second they finally first touch, jump. Notice how your car barely leaves the ground. That's because all its momentum has been transferred to the ball, which you can now admire from afar as it arcs deliciously into the goal. A true doinker can even doink in the air. No unsubtle dodging or ugly freestyling is necessary. Just a simple, sophisticated single or double jump. After you make contact, the ball will level out horizontally, taking it over your opponents and into the back of the net. As demonstrated by the first Battlecast clip I ever put on YouTube, backflips are bloody fantastic at hitting the ball backwards. I mean, look at this finish. But did you know? A backflip also comes in useful when shooting forwards. As redundant as this might sound, it actually provides a pretty neat advantage over a forward dodge. Instead of following the ball towards your opponent's goal, backflipping keeps your car exactly where it currently is. So how's this done? Just jump before you hit the ball, then backflip straight after you connect. You can then continue to apply pressure, take a stab at your own rebound, or be ready to defend if your shots are as terrible as mine tend to be. It's also useful when hitting the ball towards a wall, as it stops your car landing awkwardly on its angle. If you really want to get 50, dodge sideways or diagonally instead of backwards. Think of the stories you'll be able to tell at parties after pulling one of those bad boys off, you mad c <laughs> There's nothing we can say about air dribble mechanics that other YouTubers haven't already explained a hundred and splag teen times. If you want to learn how it's done, we recommend Mason RL's excellent tutorial, which we've linked in the description. Here though, we're going to discuss some of the mind games at play when pro players get the chance to dribble balls down upon each other from the sky. Number 1. If you're in the middle of an air dribble and your teammate flies towards you with an angle for goal, don't be selfish. The defenders are likely to be keeping a close eye on you, meaning your teammate can ghost in relatively unnoticed and line themselves up for a shot. The pro player knows when to pull out and let their teammate take over. 2. If you are that teammate, consider whether the dribbler is more or less likely to score than you are. If they're going to be taking the F word out, go for it. Be wary though, if you choose poorly and inadvertently tackle your teammate, they gon' be P-worded! To put any defenders off, you can even go for a fake. We'll expand on faking in a couple of tips time. 3. If someone turns on the air dribs when you're in goal, stay patient. They usually score because the defender dives in early. 
while the dribbler still has plenty of boost. The longer they're airborne, the more the ball drops and the less they can manipulate its flight. If you do feel you have to go early, aerial slightly higher than normal because they're delaying the speed at which the ball falls. Of course, this then invites them to fake you, so prepare to nosedive at any moment. Saying all that, staying in goal makes it more likely for the dribbler's teammate to get a clear shot. <sighs> Point being, when to stay and when to go relies on knowing the position of every player on the pitch and making a decision based on this information. This decision making is one of the things that separates the mechanically capable keepers from the truly talented. Behold! The common air dribble's arguably hotter sister. This combines the beauty of the air dribble with the unpredictability of the backboard. After taking one or more aerial touches, power the ball over the goal, follow it up and score the rebound yourself. Plenty of players will utilize this move regularly in the upcoming RLCS2 LAN. It's worth mentioning here that the backboard plays a huge role in high-level Rocket League in general. As pro keepers are so good, strikers purposely aim certain shots above the goal. This slowly but surely draws the defense out of position, eventually leading to what can be considered an easy chance at that level. Pro Rocket Leaguers are a deceptive bunch of bastards. One minute, you're sure you got the block on them. The next minute, this happens. This is it, the dirty dangles. The do it to them, the look at do. that. The do it to them, one after another. The mechanics behind this fakery are simple. Look like you hit the ball, then surprise, don't. Fakes work because Rocket League is based so heavily on prediction. By faking, you use your opponent's own reading of the game against them. To practice dribbling fakes, do something I'm too permatilted to do and play ugh, 1v1s. See if you can goad your opponent into prematurely dodging by wiggle 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 ing your car without ever actually hitting the ball. As mentioned earlier, another way to fake is to pull out of a redirect. This can leave the poor old keeper unsure where they should wait in the goal as they don't know which angle the shot's going to come in from. Some pro teams even fake certain kickoffs. The kicker offer misses on purpose. The ball then rolls towards their keeper who can pick out a teammate for a counter-attack. Flipside tactics are particularly notorious for this. The slippery scumbags. If you're going to try out the dumb kickoff thing, we recommend you avoid doing so in standard solo. This is because your keeper will probably be off somewhere in Alta Narnia collecting a boost canister. Just titling this move was almost as tricky as actually performing it. So let me provide a few examples from players much better than myself. The mechanics behind this are simple, unless you're a noob. Step one, wait for the ball to roll up the side wall. Ideally, it should be about halfway up the pitch and halfway up the wall. Drive into it at a slight upwards angle as fast as your little wheels will carry you. You must be supersonic when you reach the ball, so boost until the last possible moment. The split second you connect, let go of boost and instantly dodge. Dodge too early and you'll knock the ball forwards instead of outwards. You can also double jump here, but for now we'll talk about dodging. If the ball's a few feet away from the wall, you'll need to delay your dodge. Jump nice and early, then barrel roll, sorry, aileron roll, <laughs> so your car is horizontal. At the last second, dodge forwards. However you hit the ball, make sure you aim above the goal. Step 3. Instantly predict the ball's bounce, an aerial in that direction. You need perfect wall reads to even connect with the rebound, let alone score from it. Step four, reach the ball before your opponents. If they beat you to it, you can still get a decent dunk. No one's gonna put your crappy dunks in a montage though, now are they? Step five, pray you don't disconnect before the match ends, then save your replay. You've earned it, buddy. Now, don't expect to go out and do these moves with ease. No matter how simple pro players can make this look, seriously, go check out a player like Snasky Streams and see how many he nails during practice. I can assure you, knowing the theory does not make this easy. Here's how it looks when I'm the one streaming. And that's why no one watches me stream anymore. Which you can fix by tuning in to twitch.tv slash teamrocketsrl. Remember, you can practice these moves by downloading O'Neill Clan's training mod pack, which is still linked at the top of the description. You won't regret it. If you found this video useful, or if you vehemently despise me and think I have an extraordinarily punchable little ginger face, please let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear from each and every one of you. Team Rocket, 
out. 